Hi folks, <clears throat> happy Thursday. Uh, welcome back to uh, What Remains of Edith Finch. The game saved, auto saved a little bit before we quit last time. So I've walked through most of that. We're gonna go through the graveyard again. But first, before we do that, hi Waffles. Um, before we do that, I wanted to go through the family tree just to remind myself who the hell everybody is. So from the top, Edith, this is us. Edith uh, just turned 18-ish, maybe? Um, might have been one of the inciting incidents. That's speculation, but I'm guessing. Milton her brother who went missing in 2003 and is generally accepted to have died at some point around then but uh except for by his mom who does not believe that he died lewis who we don't know really anything about except that lewis died a week before they left the house back in 2010 don't know any more than that uh, their mom is Dawn. I don't really know that much about Dawn, except in relation to Edie and to, sorry, to Edie and to Edith. Uh, she's sort of figured as somebody who is very protective and secretive, doesn't want to talk about the family, doesn't want to talk about their history. Uh, as opposed to Edie, who is a little bit more into memorializing, uh, you know, and, and makes those, like, little lace things, whatever. Dawn and Sanjay, don't know anything about Sanjay. Gus and Gregory, Gregory was a little baby who, uh, for some reason is associated with the pink bathroom. Gus, I don't think I know anything about. What? Oh, okay, wait. K. Hmm. How does this work? So, uh, Don, Gus, and Gregory were Sam's kids? Because they weren't Walter's kids. Yeah, they must have been. Sam and K. have never heard of K. Uh, but Sam, I guess I didn't realize that Sam had three kids. Sam was the military guy who was Calvin's twin brother. So he had three kids. I will learn more about them. That's this whole group, I'm sure. Calvin wanted to be an astronaut, and he swung himself off of a cliff on his swing. Barbara was a, uh, a horror movie star who met a horror movie end. Molly was a cat. Walter uh, was uh, hit under the bed when something happened to Barbara, presumably involving her boyfriend or possibly fans, something bad. I also think that she disappeared. Oh yeah, they found, according to the story, according to the story, they found her ear and nothing else. So I don't know if she died. Um, Walter lived in the basement then for years and years and years uh, until he got hit by a fantastical train um, I, I, it took me back to the train, by the way, and I had to walk sort of from there, and that train, like, that train goes nowhere. That train literally just goes right off the cliff. Like, that's not a, there is no train infrastructure. So in the, when we're talking about sort of trying to put together the layers of fantasy and reality, um, and the, the sort of fantastical construction of the house there's also a fantastical construction to this train um and then Edie is the great grandmother who was married to Sven who did who lived for a long time uh and was with them I think when they moved out of the house but must have died sometime shortly after that and then Sven, I feel like we've learned some things about Sven, but I don't really remember. I guess I just, 
he had a room with Edie. And maybe that's it. Maybe just uh, they had their they had their shared bedroom. And then Odin is the one who uh, brought the house over from Norway. I don't remember where they're from. Sweden, somewhere, and uh, and it sank, so he rebuilt it. And he's and also has a national forest, I think, named after him. Um, but the family is cursed in some way it's not been made clear but has been cursed for hundreds of years so long before odin brought the family over to uh to washington state oh yes yeah, sven is the one yes thank you kyla sven is the one who was killed by a dragon uh because he was a carpenter and uh and was building a dragon slide and it murdered him um, okay, so we're gonna speed run the graveyard. It's embarrassing for me to admit this, but the pet cemetery may be more uncomfortable than the human one. Sure. Three of the gerbils are mine. Two had been my fault. Sven built the house, but it was Edie who designed the cemetery. December 5th. Right, that's right. I'm sure Odin's monument had been Edie's idea. My mom was always trying to move on, but for Edie, the past never went away. And the monument is that way out she there. Could see it poking out of the water at yeah, the yeah, tide. Yeah. Edie's side was always easier for me to understand. Uh, Edie's the side. The more I get, the more uh, I can see where my mom was coming from. Uh, burying the past versus memorializing it. She I lost think two of her is. brothers, just like I did. I get why she tried so hard to protect us. She lost two There's of her so brothers just I like I did. My mom now. Part of me thinks this is what she wanted all along. For me to come back someday. And find everything out for myself. Okay. We're going up into the treehouse. Is this the treehouse that Molly came to? As a cat, probably. But looking back on it now. If she told me there was going to be so mm. much climbing. That's a fucking cool treehouse. I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. 22 weeks pregnant. Holy shit, yep. Confirmed. Oh my god. Edith. Okay, that was really well written. That that just that little thirty seconds there. Uh, I mean, the whole game has been really well written, I guess. But uh, that that felt really good. Like I felt tense trying to make that climb. There's a flag. There's a ladder. That's where I should go. So what's in this attic? Is that... Oh, I thought that was a book. It's just a box. Okay. Boxes and Tupperware and a canoe. I never met Grandpa Sam, but I think he and my mom had a lot in common. Oh, Sam, right. Sam. Yes. Okay. Military hunter guy, and he's his little... Area. He's got a camo doormat and an American flag and some bird feeders, homemade bird feeders, and a grill. Hell yes. They were both pretty intense. They were, they were both pretty intense? Sam spent his life shooting photos, but Mom said he got nervous being in front of the camera. I guess we're all afraid of something. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, he's got 
did yes, uh, Edie did these, right? Edie did these portraits of people after they died. I do. I really like the lace uh, things that Edie does. And Instead that of hiding from death, Sam seemed to go out of his way to meet it. Oh, interesting. That they um, they sort of mark where the vignettes are, where the short stories are. <laughs> that action pose cat is pretty good. I like that. If you're going to have a taxidermied cat... I feel like that's probably the one. K, who was K was, I think K was Sam's wife. So this is a box of K's stuff. And an airline ticket. Oh shit. Okay. All right, here's a bed that only one person sleeps in. That's well done. That's efficient storytelling. Um, all right, well, let's do it. Look, he's got his his ring in a box. Shit. Uh, who Don, was that? I promise, you'll never forget this weekend. Yes, sir. Dawn is mom. Okay. Okay. These memories are going to last a lifetime. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Am I going to have to shoot anything? It's a hunting trip, Don. Shooting is strongly encouraged. Perfect. Ooh. That actually felt pretty good. Ooh, Jesus. This, this mechanic is great. Holy fuck, this makes me think of, you know what this makes me think of is, um, what's it called? Return of the Oberdin? The Oberdin game. Um, I've, I've, I feel like this isn't actually the first time I've thought this, but, uh, this specifically, this, like, <laughs> we're gonna take you from from moment to moment right this isn't a continuous story this is you have a fixed perspective not a fixed perspective a fixed point of view and you can look around and sort of explore the scene and take a picture uh and then we're gonna move you to the next place where you can look around at a new scene a little diorama fuck i love diorama games um, and, uh, meanwhile, there is, there's a, uh, an audio drama that's sort of playing over this, contextualizing all of these specific images. This is very good. It feels very Oberdin. I will never forget this weekend, Dad. That's the spirit. Okay, got it. I'm gonna take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. The camera's older than you are. God, this is so good. I would play a whole game that was built out of this. You're right, Dad. It's starting to clear up. Still freezing, though. <laughs> What's over there? It's like some a little like shrine or something. Fuck, this is good. This is good. All right. Oh, that wasn't it. That was not it. Where's Dawn? Is Dawn here somewhere? That felt pretty good. No, oh, I am Dawn now, because Dawn is taking pictures. Picture 
I definitely won't be moving. Are you hey! <laughs> That's a keeper. Nothing quite like being outside. I'm just saying, I'm not always gonna be here, Don. You'll need to remember this stuff, if you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was gonna be fine? Some guy who died. Don, I'm being serious. I know, Dad. You're always serious. Doesn't being out here make you want to chill out? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't been out here in 20 years. Oh man, I'm trying to get the perfect Last picture. Last time I was with my brother Calvin. Man, that was a great trip. Don, don't you think you could find something more interesting to photograph? Sam? Dad? Your grandpa Sven taught us how to fish. How to build a fire. We found an old logging trail. There were deer everywhere. Dad! Good eyes, Don. Oh no, lift your head back up. Yeah, that's a shot. Before you take the shot, let me get a picture of you. Can I take a picture of you taking a picture of me? Dad. Oh. Just breathe. Turn off your imagination. Focus on your target. Let me get the eye. Do I have to do this? Don, you don't have to do anything. If you want to survive, you'll need to be strong. Yourself squared up, elbows down, like we practiced. Whenever you're ready. Great shot, Don. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Sam. And it won't. It won't let me focus in on her more. Like it won't let me get closer to her and it won't let me focus on myself either. I'm like stuck in this uncomfortable place with a bad image and my daughter crying in the background. I'm proud of you, Don. Always remember that, okay? Oh shit, now I'm... What the fuck is this game? What is happening? Sorry, Don. Just gotta reset the timer. Oh my god. Oh my god, okay. It's a timer. Dad, it's twitching. I think That's it's. That's totally not normal, Don. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about Dad! it. Of all these stories, that's the one I wish most that my mom had told me. Holy shit! What? Fucked up. Fucked up, man. Um... Okay. I, what does that tell us about Dawn? I feel like... I feel like Edith and her mom Dawn and her grandmother Edie... No, I guess it is... I guess it's I guess it's sort of this, this branch. I guess we're really following this whole branch. Edith and Dawn and Sam and Edie are really focal points but like i really care about dawn you know what it is it's it's that it's it's um it's structured well right like we learn about odin um i mean i guess first we learn about molly uh but we we learn about odin early and that's sort of an introduction to the the story we learn about barbara and calvin and walter and people who are peripheral kind of to what we really care about, which is, I 
think is Edith and Dawn. I think it's Edith and Dawn. And I think that we're going to continue to sort of... We're probably going to learn about Gus and Gregory and Lewis or maybe Milton and Edie and Lewis. And Dawn is going to be like the climax of the game is like getting to a point where we have insight and empathy with Dawn because like holy shit what a fucking traumatic moment for a little girl for her dad who is loving and kind but also very distant like kind of cold and uh, and has a, a has a complicated history and sort of personal interaction with the world to have your dad take you on your first hunting trip and the trauma of killing a deer and then the trauma of having your dad die uh Wow. Holy shit. Okay. Okay. All right, Don. That's something. So who's in this picture? That must be Sam and his wife and Don. And who were Don's brothers? Gus and Gregory. So little baby Gregory and Gus with a mohawk. So that must not have been the only, unless this isn't them. But little baby girl, I mean, it's it seems weird if it wasn't them. I think this must be them. So maybe it wasn't her first hunting trip, but it was the first time that she was hunting. And K. So Kay, Kay left at some point before that, right? Before he got he got killed by a by a deer. Am I backtracking? Where am I going now? Wait, hold on, sorry. Am I missing oh there's something here. Hmm. Okay, so now we're in the like. Um, After Sam died, just empty space. My mom and Edie got really close. They both lost a lot. Uh huh. Uh huh. Her son, Edie's son, and uh, and Don's mom. Sorry, Don's dad. Finch control. So this is um. What was his name Calvin? Calvin or maybe Milton. Like Milton is the one who's been uh, exploring all of the secret areas of the house. It seems like. Oh shit, Gregory! Little baby Gregory. Gregory and Dawn and and Gus with a, with a skateboard. Yeah, Gus is fucking punk, man. And a uh, kite. Oh, interesting. I can't imagine my mom ever writing poetry, and yet. She wrote a poem for.
Can I can I unplug it? Oh my god. I'm sure he's happy. And he'd want you to be happy too. That's horrifying. Okay. Love Sam. That's very sad. And, you know, really... I don't know that Sam was... Uh, was not humanized previously. Like, I don't think that he was such a caricature. Um, but that, that certainly helps give him depth uh, as a character. I'm in the bubble bat. That's very sad. I don't know if it was Sam who divorced Kay. Uh, I actually read that as, uh, you know, I, the 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 last part of it. It was that I th I I think that Gregory's happy, or I hope that Gregory's happy, and he would want you to be happy too. I don't know if that is... That is certainly Sam wanting to sort of, like, let Kay go. Whether he is divorcing her for that purpose, or he's granting her a divorce, I don't know if it matters. There's a punching bag. Oh, yes, that's right. Punk... Punk Gus has probably got a punching bag. Uh, oh, shit. Oh, yes, Sam. Sam is very disciplinarian. Right. Greg, be a baby. Oh, wow. Tragic. I mean, this... The, this game is about tragedy in a very real way. A poem for Gus, who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. Okay, so I'm like, I'm interacting with the text in the space. My father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. Whose wedding is this? It, it, the, the kite behaves very unkite-like when I stop messing with it but i'm trying to I'm trying see to like who's Though getting married we don't need a stepmom or the words that i now pronounce you husband and wife so sam remarries Everybody's moved over. Can I bonk people with my kite? Oh, there's stuff. Come here. 
But Gus declined, and as a sign held up his middle finger. <laughs> the wind picked up, and panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. Are we gonna get electrocuted? The rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed to Whoa. Nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. Whoa. Thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. All my father said to this was make the music louder. What the fuck? Holy shit. Very Wizard of Oz. I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone. Just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't. Until we found you. Wow. She never talked about him, but Mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. I'm... Yeah, again, I feel very connected to Dawn. Uh, I think because this is a game that is about Edith's relationship to her mom. And maybe to motherhood, right? Like, that's the idea behind her pregnancy, is that she's trying to explore her history, her family history, and project it forward. And... Uh, and so I'm really, I feel like I'm understanding a lot of the earlier generations, the stories that we hear in the earlier generations, in terms of how they affect Sam, how they affect Dawn's dad, and therefore how they affect Dawn, how that sort of helps to shape her, and why she becomes the person that she is. I mean, these... These vignettes are, like, so well done and very affecting. Uh, oh, shit, they each, have, they each have a locker. Wow, okay. Um, all right, where to next, game? Jump rope. Climbing wall. I'm going to climb up the climbing wall. Her brothers died. That's why her bed is empty. At the time, it was as far away as she could get. And at this point in the history, the rooms are maybe locked, but they're not sealed. It's not until Dawn grows up that she starts sealing off the rooms, right? I think that's what I remember. Okay, so Dawn dives into religion uh, and has a relationship with India ends up meeting and marrying I guess Sanjay Sanjay is the father pack fly to India uh, copy passport for volunteer center after school teaching Okay, so she's a she's a teacher and a volunteer, uh, maybe in like a missionary capacity. She goes to India and she meets somebody there. Religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine needing uh, needing something to help get through that. Like what? That fucking... 
That whole Sam thing was wild. That is maybe my favorite short story. Just because I think the mechanic was so cool and I was so shocked at the ending. She spent a summer building houses in Calcutta where she met my dad, Sanjay. Okay. My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Okay. Lewis was born a year later. Lewis was born. Lewis was the oldest. Edith, why are you out here like this? This is terrifying. Go when back inside. Died, I don't think Mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. And to see kids in the house again. Sure, that makes sense. Okay, so Milton has, like, skyscrapers. And Lewis is actually planting a garden. And Edith has little figures, little action figures. And Don is trying to do a lot. Um, the house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. House had to get a little bigger. Sure. Of course. And for a while, things were good. Almost normal. Uh, and they're homeschooled. There were homeschooling books in the library. But it didn't last. Um... Odin Finch, The Curse. By Edith Finch. Interesting. Tell us about that curse, Edith. I want to know more. So Edith has lots of homework turned in. Lewis has a little bit. Milton has none. Our family history. Fact or fiction? Can I get in here? No. I mean, what a cute little schoolroom. To Teach and to Learn by Dawn Finch. Seven ways to create a fulfilling classroom. Relief efforts end in disaster. Is that... I wonder if that's what happened to Sanjay. Jesus Christ, I'm telling you? Don't go out there. After Milton disappeared, the only thing he left behind was a room full of paintings. That looks very unfinished swan. This whole room looks very unfinished swan. Is this an unfinished swan reference? Shit, I don't remember the story in that well enough to say that, like... Did Milton disappear into a painting? And that was the unfinished swan? Okay. Okay. That's pretty wild if that's what that is. If that's a, like... They just inserted another game into this game. I mean, all of this, like, black and yellow paint splatter is very unfinished swan. Maybe they're just going to reuse those mechanics because they're so good. That, this is, th that, hmm. Interesting. Interesting, okay. I'm going up, okay. Holy fuck, are we just gonna play Unfinished Swan now?
the magic paintbrush. Milton Finch in the magic paintbrush. Oh, it's a, is it a, there we go. Okay. All right. Achoo. A flip book within a flip book. disappeared huh yeah I mean that crown and mustache I don't remember I don't really remember but I'm pretty sure that that is iconography from the unfinished one um fascinating really really interesting really interesting thing to do um American historic American newspaper now available. Okay. Um, fascinating, fascinating, fascinating way to handle this. So the stories that we see are they're all the the end of people's stories, right? I don't remember what Odin was all about. Odin was the, the like, kaleidoscope reel. I don't remember how Odin died, though. Um, Walter we saw get hit by a train. Sam got offed by a deer. Calvin swung himself to death. Barbara got horror movied. I think I'm thrown off by Molly, who... How did she die? Did she overdose on, on holly berries? On, uh, on, like, nightshade or something? Odin went down with the original house. I don't remember that, but that's possible. So, so Molly... I guess Molly, uh poisoned herself and sort of was hallucinating being all kinds of different animals. And so we sort of see her last moments. Gregory drowned in the bathtub. Gus got blown away in a storm. Milton disappeared into the unfinished swan. Okay. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. Can I go in? Nope. Okay, all right. Yeah, interesting. I feel like the yellow footsteps are kind of uh, suggestive that he came back Whatever out at some point, but maybe not. I'm reading too much into that. Out. Shouldn't have gone that way. Fuck, now I want to play the unfinished swan again. That was good. Good level design. I came out through here. I didn't even realize there was another way to go. Yeah. That's good. That's very nicely done. Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room until Mom got him a job at the cannery.
So Don blamed Edie. I maybe missed an important piece of dialogue. Don blamed Edie for Milton's disappearance or for something to do with Lewis. Everyone always told me to stay out of Lewis's room. Except Lewis. Okay. Okay, he's got a hookah and a pot poster and neon a neon exit sign. Can I get over to the exit? You're gonna climb onto this boat? Seriously? Edith, I don't feel good about your decision making. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. That part of him lived on. That, that part of him lived on. Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. <laughs> uh, same, Lewis. It's a gamer keyboard. Greater Seattle Institute of Psychology. Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the camera. Okay. But he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... Began to what? Wonder. Oh! Oh shit! Oh! I'm playing WoW now! Oh my god, I, I can see it. exactly where this is going. It's gonna be really bad. Holy shit, guys. This is well done. He said he okay. Small. So you can imagine, I bet, like... All of my attention is focused on the left part of the screen. Because that is, uh, uh, for two reasons. One is that I'm doing two things at once, right? I'm playing this little um, RPG, like top-down adventure game, uh, and I am I'm moving my mouse back and forth to grab the fish. Uh, it, it's kind of funneled. To the right, all I have to do is move the mouse to the right, and it'll go to the right place. But when I move the mouse to the left, I kind of have to pick where the fish is. Uh, and at the same time, I'm using the keyboard to move the character around. So all of my attention is over on the left side of the screen. I'm just like swinging my mouse wildly to the right uh, in order to... Um, keep doing this right keep keep do, keep up this rhythm of motion let's see how that turns out uh oh there go imagining a labyrinth he feel his way about I mean, this is um, just waiting, just bats. waiting for this. Bats, now and there's toads. bats. Toads. And a big old dragon. I'm fucking up my job. Things that have not names. Okay. Going over here. He knew it was all in his head. Somebody, somebody tell me. He took it very seriously. 
Somebody tell me when I chop my hand off. I had hoped he'd find himself. And now it's red. There's this big red carpet. I'm extremely uncomfortable. Something. And now the game is in 3D. I worried about him then. The play is the same, I guess, but I'm dreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, uh -huh. tireless, focused. Uh-huh. This. Okay. Like a whole new Lewis. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. Can I pet the dog? I mean, my anxiety is, is through the roof. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topi. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Holy shit, I can't. This is too much. Then he made musicians. songs for them to play. He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the cannery. But his chopping was as reliable as ever. Reliable chopping! And one day it struck him. What struck him? At all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. And he won. They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. Oh my god. He'd conquer a city it's encroaching and more and more on the like part of it that I'm I'm you Lewis supposed to be able to see oh my god and now there's like there's a lag Saint in Lewis. the controls so I have to like pay more attention also St. Louis is very good away from our reality Minneapolis Jesus and Christ, one day Lewis! To go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. Interesting. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a. Oh my God! Uh. Handsome queen. Handsome queen. The queen was on her own quest for... Uh, sinister serpents. Sinister serpents. Jesus. The 
followed the sound of no. Uh, an electric sitar. Can I get over there? Yeah, I can. Electric sitar. Hit those notes. Hit those notes. <laughs> I'm like so. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. I, okay, now the whole cannery is gone. He knew the world was all in his imagination. Oh my god, I'm so anxious. But he was fucking so fish hooks. Created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. I can't! I can't take this! For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. <sighs> I probably shouldn't be relaxing right now, but... Okay. Here's my locker. This is clearly my locker. I have a... What is that? I began to forget the world we know. Oh, Jesus, okay. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. began to despise the man with a royal contempt. He's wearing like a jersey? Yeah. Okay. Oh, here we go. I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace would be packed with his companions. I'm on a conveyor belt. Oh, look at that guy! I fucking love it. Including the wise Calico who insisted on advising him. Molly! <gasps> his queen waited, holding his crown. Okay, here we go. There was only one thing left to do. Is he going to kill himself? Okay, yup. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Jesus Christ, that's some imagery. Um... And the rest I think you know. Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him.
My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him.